Hey Luke here with the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel and I do a lot of extreme cold weather camping in some awful conditions. I've taken my wife and three kids into some really extreme weather and because of that I've got 24 tips I think can help anyone stay warm. All right, this first tip will keep you crazy warm. Take your summer hydration bladder, fill it full of hot water, and wear it under your winter clothes. A small two liter hydration bladder will keep you warm for well over eight hours. For the ultimate luxury, fill your hydration bladder with your favorite hot drink and you'll be smiling all day long. Just make sure to wash it out when you're done, otherwise it'll grow mold. Number two on my list, adhesive body warmers. I always keep a few in the car and in my first aid kits. These body warmers are just large hand warmers with an adhesive sticker on the back that allows you to stick them directly to your body. You don't want to stick it directly to your skin because they get too hot, so make sure to put it on your base layer. After you open the package, it takes about 45 minutes for the body warmer to start giving off heat, but then they'll last for over 12 hours. I'm a firm believer that there's no situation too cold if you have enough adhesive body warmers. Sometimes in real extreme weather, I like to stick an adhesive body warmer to the back of my cell phone to keep the battery from dying. And the company that makes adhesive body warmers, they also make hand warmers, adhesive toe warmers, heated inserts for your shoes, and an enormous lap warmer. If your gear isn't quite good enough to keep you warm, buy a packet of adhesive body warmers and it'll get the job done. Next on my list, hot water bottles. Whether you're at home or out in the woods, a hot water bottle can go a long way to warming you up. Hot water bottles come in all shapes and sizes, and you can even buy them with a thing called a cozy. A cozy is just a fuzzy sleeve that keeps the hot water bottle from burning your skin and keeps the heat in longer. Hot water bottles are great for preheating your sleeping bag, keeping you warm throughout the night, or just having something to cuddle up with when you're sitting next to the fire. If you don't have a dedicated hot water bottle, you can fill up a Nalgene bottle with hot water and put it in your sleeping bag or under your coat. Just make sure to check it for leaks before putting it in your sleeping bag. If you wake up in the morning to frozen boots, two water bottles can work great for thawing your boots out. If you have big feet, you can use two Nalgene bottles full of hot water. If you have little feet, you can use two Gatorade bottles. If your feet get cold easily, make sure you own a pair of down camping slippers. They weigh next to nothing, take up no space in your bag, and they'll keep your feet extremely warm. Down camping slippers are great for wearing around inside the tent or trailer, and you can even wear them in your sleeping bag at night. I prefer the Western Mountaineering brand camping slippers because they have just enough sole on them that I can go outside the tent if I need to use the bathroom or sneak outside to grab something. If your feet get cold easily, make sure you're always wearing a pair of dry socks, especially when you go to bed. When we start to sweat, the first things to get wet is usually our feet. Our feet are wet so often, we often don't notice how wet they are. Before you go to bed, change into dry socks. If your feet start to get cold, stop and change into dry socks. And if you don't have a pair of dry socks, take the time to air out your feet and dry your socks by the fire before putting them on and going to bed. If you don't have the opportunity to get dry socks on before you go to bed, pull your socks off and put them in the foot of your sleeping bag before you go to sleep. It's better to go to sleep with no socks on rather than wet socks. Plus, when you wake up in the morning, the heat of your bag will have dried your socks off. Make sure you get a good sleeping mat. Your sleeping mat is more important for keeping you warm than your sleeping bag. Sleeping bags don't insulate very well when their insulation is compressed, so the part of your sleeping bag in between you and the ground doesn't do much to keep you warm. Additionally, touching cold ground will cool your body two to four times faster than touching cold air. So the mat you sleep on is way more important for keeping you warm than your sleeping bag. The measure of a good sleeping mat is its R value. The higher, the better. At zero degrees, you want an R value about six. And at negative 20, you want an R value of seven or eight. If your mat doesn't have a good enough R value, you can stack multiple thinner mats on top of each other in order to stay warm. Sometimes I'll take layers of cardboard and put it under my mat to increase the R value of my sleep system. Make sure your mat's also big enough and wide enough for you, especially if you tend to roll around a lot at night. If you roll off your mat in the middle of the night, you're gonna wake up really cold. Getting the right sleeping bag is very important if you wanna stay warm while camping. Size your sleeping bag correctly. You want your sleeping bag to be as small as possible without it restricting any of your movements. Make sure to test out your sleeping bag in all the different sleeping positions you might find yourself in. If there is tightness, the insulation will be compressed and you'll have a cold spot in that location. A bag that is too big will also be colder because it has more surface area for heat to escape through. If you have a sleeping bag that is too long, you can either stuff clothes in the foot of the bag or you can roll up and clamp the foot of the sleeping bag to reduce the dead space. 
And when you buy sleeping bags, don't believe the temperature ratings. Sleeping bag ratings are very loosey-goosey. For normal people, you want your bag rating to be 20 degrees Fahrenheit lower than the expected low temperature when you're camping. But if you get cold easily, your minimum temperature might be as much as 40 to 60 degrees above whatever that says on the sleeping bag. When I take my wife out camping, I typically have a bag that's rated for 60 degrees Fahrenheit colder than whatever we expect to experience. If you don't have a sleeping bag with a good enough rating system, don't be afraid to stuff a second sleeping bag inside your sleeping bag. If you want your gear to keep you warm, you've got to store it correctly. Make sure your sleeping bags, down jackets, puffy pants, down booties, all of those need to be stored either hung up or in a storage sack. Do not store them compressed. Their insulation will get flattened and compressed and then it won't work very well. This is especially true for anything made with real down. I try not to leave my sleeping bag in the compression sack for more than two to three days at a time. Pound for pound, one of the best articles of clothing to keep you warm is a balaclava. They're also great for keeping your head warm when sleeping, especially if you don't like the feeling of a mummy bag hood over your head while you sleep. They can be worn as a neck gaiter and they are also good for keeping the sun off your face on a sunny day out on the ice. If you're going to be doing strenuous physical activity out in the cold, it's really important to have proper layers. Layers allow you to adjust your body temperature and to manage sweat so that you don't get wet. If you do get wet, once you stop exerting yourself, you'll cool down and get extremely cold. Generally speaking, you want base layers, mid layers, and an outer shell. The base layer goes against your skin and helps wick away sweat away from your skin. Your mid layer should have the most insulation of all your layers. A good outer shell protects you from wind and water, but also allows sweat and vapor to escape. Gore-Tex is one of the best materials for doing this, but you also want an outer layer with vents. Typically these vents are in the crotch and in the armpits. By unzipping your vents, you allow a lot of heat and moisture to escape without exposing your mid layer to outside moisture. If for whatever reason you find yourself getting really sweaty while being physically active out in the cold, dry yourself out before you stop your activity so that you don't get really cold. If you have small kids, keeping their hands warm is a constant battle. Kids don't like wearing gloves and mittens, they take them off constantly, and they can't get them back on themselves. Instead of giving kids gloves, buy them nice winter jackets with longer sleeves that go all the way to the tips of their fingers. The kids can pull their fingers in and out of the sleeves without your help, and they often prefer this over wearing gloves. Unless the kids need to be touching the snow and ice with their hands, this is a great solution, even in pretty cold conditions. When you stand next to a campfire, only a small percentage of the heat is directed towards you. A heat reflector will increase that percentage very noticeably. A heat reflector can be any hard surface that absorbs and reflects heat. A heat reflector can be made from logs or it can be something natural like a large rock or a fallen log. A heat reflector can also block the wind and keep the smoke from blowing into your face. If I'm going to spend a lot of time warming myself by a fire, I usually make a heat reflector. Often the coldest part of my winter trips is when I get out of the car. So before you arrive at your destination, turn down the heater so you're just a little bit chilly or at least cool. Your body will switch from trying to cool itself down to trying to warm itself up. And it's not as much of a shock when you get out of the car. Not eating or drinking enough can make you bitterly cold. Your body needs energy to produce heat. And when you get thirsty or your blood sugar gets low, you get tired and stop moving around as much, which also makes you cold. Little kids are especially bad at recognizing when they are hungry or thirsty, when they're out and about or having a good time. When you're out in the cold, proactively eat and drink before you get cold or hungry or thirsty. This will help keep you warmer longer. More is not better when it comes to wearing socks. Rather than having big fuzzy socks, it's more important to have moisture wicking socks that are comfortable and don't restrict any blood flow. Reduced circulation and wet feet are the biggest enemies of keeping your feet warm. Kneeling, sitting, or even standing on ice for long periods of time will get you very cold. If you know you're gonna be stationary for a while, make sure there's something in between you and the frozen ground. If you don't have a camping chair, use a pile of pine bough, or use your sleeping bag, or a sleeping mat, or even your backpack. Just have something in between you and the ground. Also, when you sit next to a fire, if you sit at an angle to the fire, with your side closest to the fire, rather than your feet, you'll get a lot more heat 
from the fire. The worst part of winter camping is getting out of a warm sleeping bag and putting on cold clothes. Store your clothes in the foot of your sleeping bag so that they are warm when you put them on the next morning. This can also help get rid of dead space in your sleeping bag if your bag is a bit big for you. Or if your clothes are a little bit damp, this can also help dry them out before the morning. Try to pick a thawed dry spot to set up your sleeping area. If you can't find a thawed dry area, build a big fire, then move your fire over and set up your sleeping area on the thawed dry ground where the fire used to be. I've used this trick to stay warm while sleeping on the ground without a tent, sleeping bag, or mat. Stringing up a tarp as a windbreak can make a big difference if there's any wind at all. Whether you're sleeping in a tent or standing around the fire, having that windbreak can make a big difference in keeping you warm. The ultimate solution to staying warm while winter camping is a hot tent. These tents are specifically designed to be heated with propane or wood stoves. However, even if your stove is roaring hot inside, the floor of the tent will usually still be very cold. There can be as much as a 90 degree Fahrenheit difference between the temperature at the ceiling versus the floor. There's two solutions for this problem. Either one, get a battery powered ceiling fan to help circulate the air, or two, use cots. Sleeping a few inches or a few feet off the ground can make a huge difference in temperature when you're in a hot tent. If you want to use a heater inside a tent, I highly recommend the Mr. Heater brand heater. There's the Little Buddy and the Big Buddy heaters. While there's always risks associated with using a heater in a tent, these heaters are specifically designed to be used inside. They have oxygen depletion shutoff switches, tip switches, and the heaters are safe to touch everywhere but the grill. Well, sometimes you just need the warmest gear no matter what. So here's a list of the warmest gear money can buy. First on the list is the Arctic Oven Igloo Hot Tent. I have owned one of these for several years and I tested it at negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It was so warm that we had to open the windows and turn down the stove because it was too hot at negative 60. Another thing unusual about this tent is it's actually manufactured here in Alaska. The Feathered Friend Snowy Owl is rated to negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit and is the warmest sleeping bag in the world. Feathered Friends is a brand that's well known among hardcore mountaineers and hikers for their high quality down sleeping bags and clothing. One thing Feathered Friends is known for is having more truthful ratings on their sleeping bags. If a Feathered Friends bag says zero degrees Fahrenheit, it's gonna be a lot warmer than other cheaper zero degree bags on the market. Feathered Friends will customize the length of any of their bags for you. I had them customize the length of several of their bags for my children so that they could have high quality sleeping bags in cold weather camping situations. The biggest problem with the Feathered Friends Snowy Owl is that it's way too warm for most camping situations for normal people. If you're in weather above negative 20, there's a good chance you're gonna to be too warm. Unless you're my wife, she likes to use it anytime the weather gets below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. As far as I've been able to discover, the warmest sleeping mat on the market is the XPED R8 sleeping mat. It's rated to negative 40 degrees. It comes in a variety of lengths and widths. The remarkable thing about the R8 sleeping mat is it's not that expensive and it's extremely compact. Baffin Boots makes the warmest boots on earth. Particularly warm are their Impact Model and the Guide Pro 2. While boot ratings are not exact, the Baffin Impact is rated to negative 148 degrees Fahrenheit. What makes Baffin Boots one of my favorite brands on this list is that they make extreme cold weather boots for just about everyone. The Baffin Snow Goose is rated to negative 60 and it comes in kid sizes in both boy and girl models. Additionally, Baffin Boots cost only slightly more money than other name brand boots. The warmest thing you can wear on your hands is the Outdoor Research Ulti 2 Gore-Tex Insulated Mittens. I bought a pair of these 28 years ago and I still use them today. However, the older models have this synthetic rubber palm that feels like a truck bed liner and it's indestructible. Newer models have this soft supple leather on the palm and it will not last nearly as long. Here you can see a pair of gloves I bought last Christmas that have the same leather palm as the new OR Alti 2s and it's almost destroyed. So if you're gonna buy a pair of these OR gloves, look for the older models with the synthetic rubber palm. The only thing that comes even close to being as warm as the OR Alti 2 is a pair of handmade double layered beaver skin mittens. For keeping your legs warm, nothing beats the Western Mountaineering flight pants. These pants are crazy warm and luxurious. The biggest problem is that they're so puffy that you'll have a hard time fitting them under normal snow pants. They weigh almost nothing and compact super small, so I keep them in my bag and use them for wearing around the tent or in my sleeping bag. The warmest hoodie in the world is made by a company called Refrigerware. It's the Polar Force sweatshirt and it's rated to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I've taken mine to negative 50 degrees and I was just fine. Refrigerware is a company that's known for making extreme cold weather clothing that's more durable. 
particularly if you're in the construction industry or you're gonna be working outside in extreme weather, this is what you want. When it comes to the warmest jacket in the world, there's no one clear winner. There are several jackets that stand out from the rest. If you want a mountaineering style jacket, the Mountain Hardware Absolute Zero jacket is hard to beat. They also make a full body down suit version that's $1,300. If you're looking for more of a parka style jacket, the Canada Goose Snow Mantra Parka is generally considered the best of the best, and it's also about $1,300. Canada Goose also makes what is arguably the warmest kid jacket in the world, the Youth Expedition Parka PBI that runs $1,000. I got this jacket for my five-year-old son, Nathan, when we were gonna go on an expedition to Greenland that was canceled because of COVID. And while I do believe it is the warmest kids jacket in the world, it's only marginally warmer than the next best thing. While Canada Goose is a brand that has its roots in Antarctic expedition and cold weather gear, they are transitioning into becoming a high-end fashion brand. Most of their gear now is about being seen rather than being warm. If you want an extreme performance parka without the fashion brand name, the Kovic brand is hard to beat. Kovic is the retail brand of Big Ray's retail store in Alaska, and the Kovic brand Premier Down Parka is very comparable to the Canada Goose Snow Mantra, but almost $1,000 cheaper. This is the parka me, my wife, and my oldest son, Tommy, have been using for the last few years. And this parka will easily go down to negative 80 or worse. Well, hopefully you learned something. If you want to see me actually use these tips and go on some pretty crazy outdoor adventures, make sure to click subscribe to the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. All right, guys, I'll see you then. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. And hit that bell button so you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.